everyone, welcome to the course on medical biomaterials. We will continue on the topic of biofilm and uh, as I have been telling you that uh, biofilm is formed on implants, devices, when even if it is placed inside the uh, human system for a few hours leading right up to few years. And this biofilm could lead to inflammation, infection and rejection of the material. Uh, biofilm can form on any type of material be it polymeric, be it metallic, be it ceramic and it can be uh, forming at any part of the body. It could be a blood contacting device or it could be orthopedic implant or it could be a urethral or it could be a drug delivery system. So, um, we have been talking about uh, biofilms and uh, what are the various issues related to biofilms, what are the components of the biofilms and um, what are the different techniques uh, uh, that have been tried out in research labs for eradicating these biofilms. Uh, biofilm leads to a lot of problems um, such as uh, uh, the uh, bacteria uh, can slowly acquire antibiotic resistance because uh, some of the bacteria which are right down inside the biofilm uh, do not get uh, the same concentration of the antibiotics or do not get exposed to the same concentration of antibiotics as that is present at the surface of the biofilm. The nutrient um, amount also varies, the concentration of nutrients at the top as against the concentration of the nutrient somewhere in the bottom of the biofilm. The oxygen concentration also varies. So, there could be genetic modifications um, in the microorganisms which are present inside uh, because they are exposed to different environments. Okay. There could be altered in the growth pattern, so they become persistent cells. Okay. So, there are many issues, um, there are many reasons because of which biofilm is formed. Okay. So, um, how do you eradicate? There are different approaches. One is to develop antibacterial and antibiotic coatings. Um, you could have a slow release systems, um, you could have slow release polymeric systems, you could have antibiotics immobilized on the surface or coated on the surface and so on. Silver is quite used um, because silver is an antibacterial in the form of nanoparticle, in the form of uh, um, ions, zuteron, organic, inorganic nanocomposites which is known to have antimicrobial properties and also anti-adhesive properties. What is this anti-adhesive? Anti-adhesive means it is that uh, um, the material, the surface need not have antibacterial or killing effect, but it prevents the attachment of the microorganisms because of their altered surface characteristic like altered surface energy, so maybe it is more hydrophilic and so on that is called anti-adhesive. Use of uh, polyethylene glycol, modified chitosan, antibiotic loaded polymer coatings, zeteroinic coatings, formulations of silver, zinc, etcetera. For example, on inorganic materials like uh, alumina or hydroxapatite, immobilizing enzymes because some enzymes like protease um, or uh, lipase or even papain have uh, either esterase activity or amidase activity or combination of both. So, they may be able to kill coating with antibiotics or immobilizing antibiotics. All these techniques help in uh, um, killing the bacteria. Another approach is developing hydrophilic surfaces. So, such surfaces may prevent uh, attachment of hydrophobic uh, organisms. Um, so, it becomes anti-adhesive. Okay. Uh, how do the organisms acquire hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity on their surface? That depends upon the type of proteins that are present on the surface of these uh, bacteria. Um, there could be a lot of hydrophobic proteins present which will prevent the attachment of these bacteria on hydrophilic surfaces. Okay, the, because the initial attachment is generally non-bonded interactions like electrostatic, van der Waals, hydrophobic interactions and so on. So, developing such surfaces or modifying the topography of the surface, okay, um, creating indents creating nano structures. Uh, by doing this, you are preventing bacterial attachment because the question that is being asked is why does uh, for example, the shells um, which are living all the time in water do not get uh, biofouled or biofilm formation or if you take sharks and fish, why there are no biofilms on them? That is because they have lot of uh, nano structures 
present on them which prevents bacterial attachment which prevents large organism settling down and so on actually ok. So, um, different approaches have been looked at and um, I have been uh, giving you examples in the previous class of some of these approaches. We will look at again a few more of these approaches. For example, um, polyesters ok or polyethylene ok terephthalate this is a polymer ok this is a terephthalic polymer this is quite lot used in large diameter vascular grafts. Um, suppose I immobilized uh, sulfobetaine ok sulfobetaine uh, get has a n plus charge ok um, exactly a zuteronic type of charge. So, um, we tested this um, modified these uh, polyesters um, using this type of uh, um, zuteronic uh, material. So, this picture shows the attachment of bacteria on pure polyesters this is after modification. So, we can see there is a lot of uh, uh, prevention in the bacterial attachment ok. So, this shows uh, this could be one technique uh, for uh, reducing the attachment of bacteria. Let us look at another example. Um, twin A T these are surfactants ok these are uh, uh, non ionic surfactants that is neutral surfactants. Um, you can modify using them on polyurethane surface. Polyurethanes are widely used in urinary stents because of its flexible nature. I did show some pictures of urethral stents long time back. So, when you um, put these uh, amphiphilic molecules the contact angle um, of the surface which was 90 degrees quite hydrophobic comes down to almost 20 degrees very very hydrophilic ok. So, these uh, amphiphilic molecule like twin 80 reduces hydrophobic surface to hydrophilic and um, hence prevents the attachment of the bacteria. Uh, these um, amphiphilics do not have antibacterial effect that means they do not have killing effect, but uh, they are able to prevent the attachment um, because they have reduced the contact angle from 90 to 20. That means, the surface energy increases or the material has become more hydrophilic. Once you immobilize uh, um, the surfaces with this particular uh, surfactant a non ionic surfactant that is another approach. Uh, Let us look at another thing. So, suppose you take a polylactic acid and um, in the presence of uh, PBS phosphate buffer PBS is for phosphate buffer uh, you get a certain attachment of say E coli and or protease metabolis ok. Um, about in uh, 24 hours we get about uh, uh, 10 power 6 CFU per ml of uh, E coli and about 10 power 10 um, CFU of uh, protease metabolis ok. But then uh, in the presence of blood plasma protein when this PLA is coated, coated with blood plasma protein then the E coli attachment goes up dramatically you can see a, a 10 power 4 fold increase ok um, in both uh, E coli and protease metabolis increase 10 power 4 means um, almost 10,000 time increase in the bacterial attachment both types of bacteria E coli as well as protease. So, the blood plasma protein enhances bacterial attachment ok. So, um, you have to be very careful when you are talking about uh, having um, biomaterial um, in the presence of blood plasma. Uh, blood plasma protein um, has been found not only in this polymeric system, but also on pre coating of titanium with human serum or plasma increases adherence. So, whole human blood causes significant alteration in biofilm structure, number of culturable and viable cells ok. Plasma is observed to be main regulator of the transcription of genes in biofilm formation, maturation and immune evasion this is another ref reference ok. And it has been found that uh, um, LB broth blood plasma stimulates formation of biofilm of microorganisms. Um, like Staphylococcus greater than Pseudomonas greater than E. coli this is another reference. So, you see all these references tells that uh, blood plasma protein enhances the biofilm formation of wide range of bacteria like Staph aureus, Pseudomonas, E. coli. So, both gram positive and gram negative bacteria um, are affected tremendously um, in the presence of blood plasma protein and they enhance the bacterial addition ok. So, 
um, environment has a very serious effect on the attachment of bacteria. So, we looked at different types of uh, case studies where different uh, approaches have been tested to, to see how the bacterial attachment could be reduced. Okay. Now, if you look at um, this entire biofilm formation, there are many things happening. You are having um, flow, you are having mass transfer that means movement of a substrate and then we are having bacterial attachment detachment. Now, these bacterial attachment detachment um, they may be having a longer characteristic time whereas, the mass transfer diffusion mass transfer kind of um, resistance uh, or mass transfer coefficient may be happening fast. So, they may be having lower um, characteristic time. So, if you look at the biofilm growth, biofilm maturation, attachment of bacteria, detachment of bacteria, biomass growth, they all operate at different time frames. Okay? And this is a very interesting uh, uh, picture which I have developed based on these references. Okay? So, the mass transfer reaction, substrate diffusion, convection, they are all happening very fast they are happening around 0.1 to say 10 seconds. Okay? Whereas, if you look at uh, the biomass growth, uh, biomass decay, detachment of biomass, this is happening in terms of 1000 um, or 10,000 or 100,000 seconds, they are much slower. Okay? So, if you look at uh, the biofilm part, the mass transfer part, the hydrodynamics part, the mass transfer, the hydrodynamics are much faster when compared to the biofilm formation which is much slower. So, we have a situation um, where the transfer of material, uh, the, the mixing is faster whereas, the attachment of bacteria, the detachment of bacteria, the biomass growth is much much slower almost uh, by 1000 to 10,000 times. Okay? So, let us look at uh, the characteristic times for each one of these processes. Okay? So, let us look at this mass transfer. Um, the time, the diffusion time, characteristic time, diffusion time is uh, delta square by capital D. D is the diffusion coefficient. This is the thickness. Now, if you look at the convection, um, this is D by u, the characteristic time, convection time. Again, this is thickness, u is the velocity. The viscosity, because of which happens because of the viscous dissipation and hydrodynamics, um, delta square divided by kinematic viscosity. Uh, this is the thickness. Okay. So, these are things related to mass transfer uh, and related to hydrodynamics. Now, if you look at the biomass growth that is reaction, uh, substrate utilization and then um, biomass decay, biomass de um, detachment. So, the reaction happens because of presence of substrate, because of uh, uh, the um, biomass okay, that is the characteristic time the reaction time. Um, the growth is 1 by mu, mu is the monod term, T d is the biomass decay is 1 by K d, K d is the constant related to the biomass um, decay and uh, T d e that is detachment is 1 by K d e. So, all these terms contains reactions, decay terms. Um, monoid term and so on which are much slower when compared to the mass transfer, diffusion and uh, viscous uh, hydrodynamics okay, which are much much faster. Okay. So, in a typical uh, biofilm growth we are having all these things happening uh, very fast processes that is the mass transfer, hydrodynamics very slow processes which is the bacterial growth. Um, bacterial detachment um, and uh, bacterial decay. It is very important to know this uh, scenario um, because we uh, although we are in, we are predominantly interested in the biomass growth, um, we need to understand uh, um, when this mass transfer uh, does not play a role in biofilm and when the mass transfer or movement or convection plays a role uh, in the biofilm growth. Okay. But then uh, the, there is a vast difference in this time which is of the order of almost 1000 seconds I would say. Okay. This is a very useful um, slide to get a feel of uh, the characteristic times 
we have fast processes and slow things happening actually. So, if you are looking at uh, biofilm growth, we can completely ignore because we can say the mass transfer happens very fast, um, the movement of material from the bulk on the surface also happens very fast and so on actually. Okay? Uh, so, biofilm structure we are talking in terms of days, whereas hydrodynamic okay, that is less than 1 second. So, the time for growth is much, much, much larger than the time for diffusion. So, we generally we ignore that okay, because the diffusion times are much smaller. Okay. Now, there has been some attempts to model the bacterial biofilm. We are not going to spend much time in modeling these bacterial biofilms. Um, models could be quite complicated. Um, we can have heterogeneous type of models and uh, for, but then at least we will look at uh, what are the assumptions on which the models are based and what are the terms um, the uh, literature has considered while trying to model this uh, and um, is based on this particular reference. So, what are the assumptions? They have assumed biofilm consists of active biomass, inactive biomass and water. Okay. So, active biomass okay, which is not biodegradable whereas, inactive biomass is related to endogenous decay and uh, it is a fraction of this active biomass. Okay. What are the assumptions? Biomass is treated as a homogeneous continuum. So, you have to remember that although biomass is heterogeneous, you may have live cells, dead cells, proteins and so on, it is considered as homogeneous. So, inactive biomass is related to the decay and the fraction of the active biomass is inactive biomass and that is not biodegradable. Nutrient diffusion to biofilm is from the solid substrate. So, in this particular example, they have assumed that the solid surface uh, is giving the nutrient that means from the bottom rather than nutrient coming from the liquid side of it. Then you can assume a monoid growth model for the biomass growth. right? Uh, you remember uh, you must have done in long time back in bioprocess where you have mu is equal to mu max divided by um, k plus s and so on actually. Then you have flat surface. So, area of diffusion is invariant with time. So, the, there is no change in the area of diffusion, but in a real situation as the biofilm grows um, area that is exposed to the movement of the nutrient can change as the biofilm becomes bigger and bigger the area per volume can become smaller and smaller and so on actually. Okay, so, we have different terms uh, we can have a mass balance of active biomass rate of change of the active biomass that is you may have a d by d time term, increment rate of active biomass due to cell growth minus inactivation rate of bio, active biomass. So, some active biomass is becoming inactive and um, the biomass is growing because of the cell growth. This is these two uh, in the left hand side we have a rate of change of the active biomass. Let us look at the mass balance for inactive biomass, where does it come from? It comes from the active biomass, a fraction of it becomes um, inactive. Inactive biomass increases as, as the active biomass becomes inactive. So, a fraction becomes inactive, okay, so that is quite simple. Uh, mass balance of nutrient in the biofilm, the rate of change of the nutrient in the biofilm that is accumulation of nutrient, diffusion rate of the nutrient into the biofilm. So, some material is coming in, substrate is coming into the biofilm due to this diffusion and consumption rate of the nutrient because the biomass or the bacteria makes use of this nutrient. Okay. So, this is plus, this is minus that is very obvious. So, that is the rate of change of the nutrient in the biofilm. Uh, mass balance of the nutrient concentration on the solid substrate. So, this happens because there is a diffusion that is taking place okay, from the solid substrate. In this particular example, uh, the nutrient is coming from the solid surface. So, you have to remember that. Okay. So, all these terms come into the picture. We have the uh, mass balance of the active biomass, when part of the active biomass gets converted into inactive biomass. Okay, so, this there is no decay of the inactive biomass, so that remains constant. Uh, then you have the nutrient that is coming in uh, due to diffusion from the solid surface, then a nutrient gets consumed because of the, as the bacteria grows. So, the consumption rate we can put in a monoid term. Uh, monoid type of rate uh, equation. So, the left hand side will be the accumulation of the nutrient in the biofilm as a function of time. Okay, then we have the nutrient concentration in the solid substrate, uh, the rate of change of the nutrient concentration in the solid substrate due to diffusion. Basically, this is happening because of the diffusion 
at the interface. Okay. So, all these terms, so we can have uh, differential equations, um, it can be a non-linear differential equations because uh, when you talk about monoid equation, you can have a non-linear monoid term here. Okay. Then uh, we can have fraction of the active biomass going into the inactive form and then uh, for the mass balance of nutrient in the solid, we can put in something like a fixed um, law term here. So, all these equations can be put together and they can be solved. So, we can get a um, biofilm that is the amount of live uh, biomass uh, change as a function of time, but the amount of uh, dead biomass or inactive biomass as a change as a function of time, the amount of nutrient concentration inside the ball of biofilm as a function of time. So, it is quite a simple model because we consider it as a homogeneous type of uh, situation. Okay. So, it can be modeled without, uh, um, without much difficulty. Um, what is the use of this type of model? We can see how the biofilm grows, um, how much nutrient is getting consumed, we can see how, what is the rate of con, uh, conversion of active biomass into the inactive biomass, uh, we can look at the accumulation of the inactive biomass. So, all these can be done. So, there are different approaches by which you can model the biofilm growth, biofilm maturation uh, and uh, nutrient consumption, but I just showed you superficially how one can go about it. This is the philosophy of it. Let us not go too much into the um, biofilm modeling, but this is how it is. Okay. So, as the biofilm grows, uh, you are going to have uh, very complex structures. You can have a very uniform flat biofilms or you can have biofilms with a lot of interstices for the nutrients to flow. So, we can have very complex um, uh, structures that is possible that depends upon the rate of nutrient uh, diffusion, that depends upon the rate of oxygen diffusion and that depends also on the rate of consumption of the nutrients by the um, bacteria and the rate of growth of the um, bacteria. Okay. So, there is a factor called G factor which is defined like this, G factor is equal to delta square mu max x divided by d s. Okay. Delta, delta is the thickness of the biofilm, mu max is your monad uh, term maximum, x is the concentration of the bacteria in the biofilm, d is a diffusion coefficient, this is the concentration of the substrate that is a growth rate limiting substrate in the bulk of the liquid. So, if we calculate this, so biofilm thickness, I know the mu max that is the bacterial growth monad kinetic term, I know the concentration of bacteria in the biofilm. I know the concentration of the substrate in the liquid side of it, I know the diffusion coefficient. If g is less than 5, okay, if g is less than 5, then you will get dense solid biofilm matrix and a flat surface. Okay. So, if small g, if the g is small that means this term is very large. Okay. So, the diffusion is uh, diffusion of the substrate from the bulk on on the surface of the biofilm is very fast. So, it is more of a reaction limited so for small g means um, this term is large, this term is small. So, this term relates to reaction, this term relates to the diffusion. So, small g means uh, the diffusion term is much larger than the reaction term. That means, uh, the um, diffusion is not controlling, the reaction is controlling. So, we get very dense solid biofilm. Now, if the G is large, that means reaction is much larger than the diffusion. Okay. So, reaction is limited by the diffusion of the substrate from the bulk on the surface of the biofilm, that is when large G, then the biofilm will be complex structures such as mushroom clusters and channels. Okay. So, the growth is very fast, um, so the substrate is not enough um, for the bacteria to growth. Um, so, the diffusion is the limiting factor that means diffusion of the substrate from the bulk uh, onto the surface of my biofilm. Then you are going to end up with the very complex structures of biofilms with mushrooms, clusters, channels and so on actually. Whereas, if uh, uh, the reaction is slow that means diffusion is much faster. Um, so, you are going to have a very thick flat solid biofilm matrix. The, this is also a very useful term to have this factor. It tells you um, which is controlling the biofilm processes. Is it the diffusion 
um, of my substrate, the limiting substrate which is helping the bacteria to grow, to grow and the diffusion of that from the bulk onto the surface of the biofilm that is controlling or is it the rate at which the bacteria grows, the biomass increases and the biofilm starts uh, building up which is controlling this or that. So, based on that um, we can also tell what type of biofilm structures you are going to have, whether you are going to have a very flat biofilm structure or whether you are going to have a mushroom or channel like uh, biofilm structures. Okay? Um, so, that completes what I wanted to talk about on biofilm, we spent quite uh, substantial time on biofilm because as I said it is the most important uh, uh, topic um, especially in the area of uh, biomaterial implants and devices and many materials fail in early days because of uh, formation of uh, um, infection, biofilm, uh, development of persister cells which cannot be easily eradicated uh, by simple antibiotics. Uh, the concentration of antibiotics required may have to go up by 10 times to kill the bacteria that is present and well developed inside the biofilm matrix which contains exopolysaccharides and proteins and uh, so on. So, we will talk about um, uh, other topics in uh, medical biomaterials in the next class. Thank you very much for your time.